Sonic. Lab. TV. In the latest upgrade to Apple's flagship door product, digital audio workstation, that is Logic Pro, or Logic Pro 9 as it's now called, we've seen the introduction of flex time. Now flex time is something that's been missing from the Apple product for quite some time, and what it does is bring dynamic time stretching and manipulation of audio onto the timeline that we can use for creative purposes. We've seen this in uh, applications such as Pro Tools and Ableton Live and other doors for quite some time, so this is a great new addition. Logic Pro 9 is actually one element of the Logic Studio package this is it here, lovely box. That also contains, as well as Logic Pro, Main Stage 2, Soundtrack Pro 3, and a whole host of free loops and instruments. In this part of the review, we're focusing on Logic Pro 9 and specifically flex time and some other major significant workflow enhancements and features that have been added to this. So what I've got are four basic tracks here, drums, bass, couple of synth parts. Just play those quickly. Not very inspiring, bit flat. Um, what I'm using, I'm not using the inbuilt instruments and there's no reason for that other than these are just what happened to come up first. So I've got Waldorf Attack on the drums, which is a nice analog, which is a nice analog drum synthesizer. And then three instances of Sonic Charge Synplant, which uh, is a really funky and sort of low DSP synthesizer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and get some drum tracks that I happen to have on my hard drive, import them into this session and see whether or not I can spice it up a bit. These drums have nothing to do with this piece of music. Now in the past, when working with multi-tracks, you move one element of the multi-track, oops, it's gone out of time. That's a bit of a problem because then all the phase between the microphones, particularly with drums and what have you, will be all shot to pieces and it'll sound terrible. Now we've had groups for a while within Logic which enable us to link channels and to some extent objects together on the arrange page, but it's never really been tight enough to use for multi-track editing. Now if I just go to my mix window, I've got all my tracks, my drum tracks selected here. I'm going to add them to a group that I've already created called drums, just to save a bit of time. Now if I go to the drum settings, open group settings, there's now this extra switch here called phase locked audio and that's brilliant because that means all of the objects in that group are now locked together phase accurately, perfect for editing multi-tracks. So now let's find a couple of bars and loop them up. Give them a quick play. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to bus all of those to a second bus and I've got uh, this audio damage combinat which is a kind of multi-band filter distortion, really kind of quite horrid, but very characterful. Add that across it and a little bit of reverb and let's just take a listen to that. Excellent. So let's get into flex time. So we turn on the flex view and that brings up this little drop down menu here, which gives us the algorithm to use when stretching the audio. Uh, I'm told by reading the manual that slicing is the best way to do it for beats. And as you can see, what it's done is it's marked out all the transients. So now what we do is we just zoom right in and we have a look and make sure that these transients are matching up to the grid. So that just enables us to snap all of the beats. Right, so first of all, let's just put a, a warp marker here. That's slightly out. So what I'm doing now is I'm moving it to be exactly on two. And you see it's lining it all up and those are all locked. So now we go to beat three, that's sli ever so slightly out, and so on and so forth. So I can go through this whole track, lining up the main beats. Now listen. Right, okay, there's one other instance there and that is the bass drum fill, which what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna drop down my beats here so I can see the MIDI event and I can see that, that I want to line it up here. So, much better. So now we've got everything lined up, just zoom out again. We can switch off flex view, just looks normal once again. We can copy the whole block uh, and once again if you look here You've got all the markers that are copied with it, so I'll take that back out. Switch on all other tracks. Now the thing is, uh, I actually preferred this track at the original tempo, so, but 
I can just change that quite easily. Just take it back down to 130. No problem. Let's go down to 111 and see what that's at, 110. You start to hear artifacts, but some of that can be quite a nice effect. But you know, there's some fairly wide range tempo changes you can make with before it starts to sound false. And the CPU's not too bad. I mean, bear in mind this is doing this across what? Two, four, six, eight tracks of drums. Not bad. So that was a quick look at flex time. As you can see, it's really, really handy, not only for multi-tracks, but you can also use it on individual tracks like vocals for remixing, just moving phrases around, very powerful. There are also quite a few workflow enhancements. So let's just take a look at a couple of those. So here's where I am. I've got my beats in place. I've got uh, all my instruments playing along, a little bit of arrangement, I quite like that. But I don't really need to have all of these tracks running. Well, so what I'm gonna do is use this feature called Bounce in Place. So I select all my regions, right click or control click, select Bounce in Place from my menu items. I'm gonna name the track Kit Bounce, create a new track. I'm gonna mute the original source. So now my original tracks are muted and I've got a, a bounce down for my drum kit, unaffected in this case, because I was bussing it. Easy to fix, just send that stereo mix back to my effects bus. Sorted. So here's a really useful feature. Previously, if you wanted to create EXS24 sampler instruments from objects on the arrange page, it was a bit of a nightmare. So with this new convert to sampler function, there's a great new feature and you can do this in two ways. Control click brings up the contextual menu and I can convert to new sampler track. This brings up the dialog box, I'll call this kit MIDI, and gives me two options. I can create individual slices or samples in the EXS instrument, via regions or transient markers. Now, I'll just cancel that a minute. I tried to use the transient markers, but it didn't actually seem to work. Even though I can switch on the transient markers and remove the ones I don't want, it still seemed to add all of the transient markers and I ended up with lots of little funny slices. So the way I'm gonna do it is I'm just gonna cut it into individual beats and now what I'm going to do is there's a couple of little pickups in there, so I'm just going to grab those and turn them into individual slices as well. Now, select all of them. So convert to new sampler track. I'm going to use regions, so that should give me one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten slices. Kit MIDI. Click OK. It's working, obviously it takes a little while to get it going. And now I've got my MIDI instrument, as well as slices, all sequenced up nicely. So if I want to change anything, um, do a bit of this. Uh, let's see. No problem. Now that would have ordinarily taken a very long time. There do seem to be a couple of bugs in this, but still having that feature is a real godsend for some people, particularly if you're taking the stuff you're working on in the studio out on the road. Okay, now one of the really big deals with Logic and always has been a problem, and that's merging documents. So if you've got two people working on an arrangement and somebody does something really cool, you want to import the instruments or some audio or a mix or whatever, it's just an absolute nightmare. All that's changed now because now within Logic 9 Pro, you can import all kinds of things from one document into another. So let's say for instance here, I've just got my drum track. I've been working on it, I've been tweaking the mix, and for whatever reason, I haven't got any of the original MIDI. That's easy to fix. Now I just go to my file menu, go to import, select the song that I know has the MIDI in it, hit import, and now here, opens up this browser and it can show it shows me all the kind of settings that I can import from that document. So I've got global settings, I've got audio, I've got instruments, I've got auxiliaries uh, or buses, I've got IO setup, I've got the MIDI, 
what I'm actually going to do is choose instruments in this case. I'm going to select all of the instruments. I want the content, so that includes the actual MIDI. Uh, I'm also going to have, may as well just have the IOs. There's no sends and no automation. Now I'm just going to add this to my arrangement. Just close this window. And there it is, it's just been brought in. Let me play that. Absolutely brilliant. So there's one last thing I want to show you and that is quick swipe comping. And that's great for taking multiple takes of say a vocal, selecting the best bits and then comping them into one master track. So I'm just going to grab my mic here and do a bit of recording. But don't worry, I'm not going to sing. One. Right, so here's my take folder. If I flip this open, you can see all my active takes in there. Now, what I'm gonna do is activate quick swipe comping. I can do that either via the menu item or via this little icon here. Now I can choose the two from take two, the one from take one, the three from take three, and the four from take four, and that's represented up here in the master track here. So there's my comp. I can uh, duplicate that comp and make some tweaks and have alternative comps if I want. But then once I've got the comp I'm happy with, I'm going to export active comp to a new track. Just mute that, open this up, and here two, three, is my master four. track, all cross-faded and put together on a separate track. Really useful feature. I hope you can appreciate I can't go into every single feature in a piece of software of this size and scale. But I hope that you can see that with some of the features I have shown, that it's actually quite a significant change to the previous version. Pricing, it is a paid upgrade. And pricing is as follows. Logic Pro 9 as an upgrade is 159 UK pounds or 199 US dollars. For the full version, it's 399 pounds or 499 dollars. Actually, I think really when you consider all the stuff you get for your money, it's still not a bad deal, even if you're starting from the bottom, buying it for the first time. As well as what we've looked at, there's a whole bunch of stuff for the guitarist, there's Soundtrack Pro, there's also uh, Main Stage 2 for playing out live. We'll look at some of that in future episodes. In the meantime, Take it easy.